Adam from Ecoways. Here we are in my vegetable garden again with my cat who's actually lying on my baby carrot plants. This is with the garlic and some rhubarb. And today I just wanted to talk a little bit about plant structure and how they climb towards the light. So, plants need light to make their food. You know that. You're studying. They photosynthesize. They're autotrophs. They make their own food. And then light is an essential part of that. Now some, so plants tend to grow up towards the light. And some plants put a lot of energy into producing even things like a woody stem, like this tree behind. You know, trees have woody stems and trunks. And a lot of their energy goes into that. And a lot of, actually, a lot of carbon from the atmosphere is in a sink or is locked up in the wood of trees, alive trees and dead trees. And that's an important place to keep the carbon so it's not in the atmosphere increasing climate change. That's why woodlands, one of the reasons woodlands are important. So trees have wood, woody stems and they're strong and, they, and one of the reasons for doing that is they go up high so they can get their leaves up, especially in the top of the canopy so they can get the light. And they're often in competition with each other to do that. Now there are other things that don't do it in quite the same way. Like here there's um, rucola. This is rocket. And it's not a woody stem, but it's, it's got quite a lot of fiber in it and it's actually hollow in the middle. But it's, it has a hollow stem and it can, you know, this is a perennial thing, well, it's actually an annual thing. So it dies back every year. So this woody stem will die back. It's not like a tree where the leaves fall off. Some depends on the tree, but many of them, you know, they're long lived. These things here are short lived, but they manage to put a lot of energy also into producing stems to keep them upright. But there are other things that take advantage of these plants that have structural stability and an architecture so they stand upright and climb up them. And there's a few good ones here. Like this one here is called um, white byrony has these tendrils, these leaf tendrils, they're modified leaf leaves, and they wrap around things so they're gonna grow up. And that's one of the ways you can grow up something if you're a plant, is you have these tendrils that wrap around. You can see this one here, it's the same plant, and it's actually holding on, if you look here, to the stems of this rucola, of this rocket that it's growing up. You see that's actually holding on. And there are a few plants that do that, have these modified stem are uh, these modified leaves to help them they're called tendrils to help them hold and this is where they are and these if you had this in like a time-lapse photography or if you filmed it over many days or in fact over hours these things wave around some go clockwise and most go anti-clockwise this one is i believe anti-clockwise and they're feeling because you think of plants as well but plants have got senses too they can feel in a sense, they can feel like this. They're, they grow like this. And when they touch something, they wrap around it. They can feel it and they wrap around by growing more on the outside, the inside, and that enables them to. Same thing with, you know, plants. You think, okay, they haven't got eyes, but they can't see, but they grow towards the light. Because, say, this plant here is growing. If you put it in a place where it was dark and there was just light coming from this side, the plant would go towards the light. And the way it does that is having hormones called auxins that promote the growth of this side of the plant. So the stems grow longer, the cells on the stem grow longer on this side of the plant and that will mean that it pushes it over. So plants grow towards the light. So they can't exactly see, but they're certainly very sensitive to light. There's also here in my garden, look, Captain, what are you squashing my carrots for, man? Here, there's some peas. I'm growing some peas in my garden here. They also have tendrils. I don't know if you can see that. I put these sticks and they're grabbing on. You see these little modified stem, these modified um, leaves that kind of hold on and they start to grow up. So we're talking about plants and plants that can climb. This is another plant that I mentioned to you in the past as we saw it a few weeks ago growing up a wild cherry tree. This is Hedra helix, Hedra or ivy. And this, this whole plant, this is a walnut plant, it's covered in this ivy that's growing up it. 
And the way the ivy grows up, it, it doesn't have tendrils like we saw before, those modified leaves that kind of wrap on, but it has adventitious roots, they're called. They're roots that actually suck on or attach themselves to the tree. They're not roots that are used for getting water and um, nutrients from the soil, but they're roots that have been adapted to actually enable the plant to hold on to the tree. And in fact, if you look at ivy, you'll actually see the little roots on the underneath where it's attached. Like often you have ivy or other plants that grow in this way, attached to, in your, perhaps in your garden, maybe on a wall. And you'll see that they have these roots that are um, adventitious root, and you can see them on the underside. I can see them here, but they're pretty small. Let's go to the next one. So talking about plants that climb or grow up things, there's a plant here that's a native clematis to Europe. It's called Old Man's Beard or Traveler's Joy. And this uses the petiole, this part of the leaf here, the leaf stem, to grab onto trees and plants that it grows up. Then the stem itself gets woody and these things get huge and they climb up trees. There's none right around here, but they get really big. But then in the, in the winter, the leaves fall out. So, so these, these stems from the leaf fall off too, but the main structure becomes woody and stays in the, in the tree itself. And there's another one here, when I'm, I love this plant here. There's a plant here, I'll take a little piece of it. This has a, a simple, maybe some of you recognize this. In English it's called goose grass or cleavers. And it has on the, has little hooks on the leaves themselves. Almost microscopic, they're very hard to see. But this can actually, doesn't use tendrils and it doesn't use the stem, but it has hooks that enable it to hang on, hooks on the leaves. So it kind of sticks onto you like that. And other things have hooks, like some things like roses or brambles actually do grow up vegetation, especially kind of shrubs and stuff. And they have hooks too. They have spines or spikes. And that may also protect them from being eaten by rabbits or deer or other things because it's prickly. But also they kind of hook on. So a lot of roses, climbing roses, especially in your garden, you'll see they don't really have very specific modifications for climbing, but they have these these spines or these spikes that enable them to kind of hold on as they just kind of their stems just grow like, and then if they got nothing to hold on, they'll fall back down and they'll come back up again. Another way plants can climb up is they wrap around their stem. And this here is a plant, a beautiful plant. It's the only European member of the yam family. Some of you know what that is, like sweet potatoes and yams. Most of those are tropical plants from mostly the Pacific and South America. But this is a one, blackberry, it has poisonous fruit, poisonous red berries later in the season. But this is one, an example of a plant that wraps its stems around other plants. You can see here, it's actually wrapping its stem around clockwise. So it actually climbs up, and this is going, this is going clockwise. Many, most plants grow anti-clockwise, I'm not sure why. But this is, look at these beautiful leaves, look at these beautiful shapes, these heart-shaped leaves. Cordate leaves. Those of you who are Italian, you know, it makes sense, doesn't it? Cordate. So this is another way. Also things like honeysuckle do that. They use their stems to climb up. So maybe wherever you are now, even if you haven't got a garden and you can't go outside, you can look outside. Look at the way that plants, some plants like trees or shrubs, are able to support themselves with woody trunks. And they're reaching out for the light, you can imagine. And then some plants take advantage of that by climbing up them. And we've looked at a few different ways they can do that. They can do that by wrapping around their stems, or they can do that by having adventitious roots that cling on like the ivy, or they can do that with um, tendrils, which are modified uh, leaves that kind of have those little ones that wrap around to help them. Or they can even have spines or hooks on the leaves themselves. So all these things are diff different modifications and adaptations allowing plants to grow. And the reason I'm talking about this now is this has just happened because it's this time of year, the spring. Suddenly all these climbing plants is like suddenly starting to climb everywhere. 
which means if you've got a garden, now's the time where you, your garden will suddenly start getting overgrown with these things like in England or another place they have something called bindweed, convolvulus, that has a stem, that, a climbing stem that wraps around. And things like that will start to really take over your garden now because these plants are taking advantage of this time of year because they're starting to grow and it's getting warmer so it's the growth time. But also the leaves on the trees are just kind of coming out now. And there's a lot of light, so these climbing plants are trying to take as much advantage of this light before they get shaded out by the leaves of the trees above. And then they also tend to flower very early. A lot of these, these this black barony is already just about to flower. Honeysuckle, which I've got over there, I can't show you, but it's over there. It's also starting to make buds, it's going to flower soon. So a lot of these things are taking advantage of this light that they're getting because the leaves on the big trees are only just opening up and coming out at this time of spring. So, have a look where you are. See if you can see climbing plants. See if you can work out how they're climbing. And some of these things actually wrap on, like my peas in my garden. They actually twist around and then they actually find something and they grab onto it and they can feel it and they twist around with these tendrils. And they can do it in a few hours. You can see that this is, so, some people think, you know, plants don't move and they're still and they're boring, but they're not. They're very, very active and very busy, especially with these things that are growing very fast, like climbers and like tendrils that happen within hours they can hold on. Anyway, take it easy, guy. And maybe you can do a bit of climbing carefully, gently, 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 but no, maybe not.